Well, I think if we use the example of, of uh, that Article 14, the, the, the right to have kaupapa Māori educations about rangatiratanga, it's Article 2 of the Treaty. The right to be treated equally is Article 3 of the Treaty, and that non-discrimination is, is Article 3 of the Treaty, and, and of course um, Article 1 is, you know, is, is the authority of the Crown and its rights and responsibilities, the role it plays in protecting rangatiratanga and, in, and ensuring non-discrimination. So that's the third part of that Article 15 um, challenge. So that's quite a, that's a very good thing. But the link between the treaty and the and the declaration is all the way through. You know, Article 3 is about self-determination. That's rangatiratanga. Article 1 talks about individual and collective rights. You know, which is which is what the treaty is about. One of the distinct. Um, I think the. Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is, is probably the strongest advocate for collective rights. You know, there's there's nothing there's nothing new. The Declaration doesn't create anything new. It just um, it puts into perspective, you know, how those how universal human rights impact on Indigenous peoples. One of the one of the re main reasons I think these the Treaty and the Human Rights um, you know Declaration standards are important is because um, traditionally the needs of Maori kids you know, how they're treated in education and health are based on needs and often those needs are determined by other people and a rights based approach, you know, first of all gives, you know, if you have a look at Article 3 of the Declaration, it talks about self-determination, so it, it gives the family and the individual um, a right to choose about what's an appropriate education, what's an appropriate um, level of health, standard of health, of well-being, those sorts of things, so having those standards is really important.